Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series and Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and in this episode we're doing something rather different. We're going back to the Crewmaster system and trying to see if we can get it to launch properly and recover safely. Launching properly is not the big problem uh, though it's been a while so I forget some of the details. Hopefully I just have a launch script to deal with and everything will work out but otherwise if I've forgotten that I have to do something that might be a problem. Um, why do they look a little bit squished? Let's unsquish the text there. Maybe about there will be fine. Uh, so yeah, uh, uncrewed of course. We've got our remote controller inside. And uh, we are going to say, let me just check edit crewmaster. Well, there's a launch script in there. Okay, run crewmaster. We've got three of them built already in, in Kerbal construction time. So we might as well test them and see if we can work with the crewmaster system safely. After all, except for the little OMS engines on the shuttle itself, it's a pretty cheap system since it's only using NK engines at the bottom. Given my recent experience with the new Hoffman shuttle and the new Glenn rocket, maybe it's possible to put this shuttle on the top of it. I might have to think about that. It might be more useful to do that with um, once we can replace these with Merlin engines though. Because then we could have a recoverable first stage sort of thing. I don't think we've unlocked the Merlin engines yet, I'll have to take a look. We've been busy with Mars stuff for a while, I haven't kept track of what we've been unlocking. Um, if we take a look here, first of all you can see all the stuff we've built. We really need to do some supply missions. And here's two more crew masters, and then once we get to the Jupiter transfer window in 41 days, we can send these Jovian demons out there. Technology-wise, we've got a lot queued up. It's currently working on advanced rocketry. Maybe that has... I, I, I'm interested that it's called advanced... I, I would have thought that we had gotten done with advanced rocketry a long time ago, but... Anyway, maybe that has uh, Merlin engines. I'm not sure, but we've got a lot of technology queued up, and we've got a lot of science sitting around, almost 5,000 points worth. Okay. Let's shut off two engines for balance. Alright, we have separation of the booster. And the shuttle is rolling. Okay, getting close to orbit here. And, well, we'll probably have to use the OMS engines to finish it off, but that's by design. So that this stage re-enters. Yeah, okay, fine. It can, it can shove off. It's okay. Alright, separation. And these are our very, very expensive nuclear OMS engines, the candle engines. The candle engines are um, basically RTGs that we're passing hydrogen through. Game is paused. Yeah, so they're RTGs we're passing hydrogen through. And that's why they're expensive. They don't provide much thrust. I think they're 4 kilonewtons each. No, 2.3 kilonewtons each, but they have a specific impulse of 900 seconds, so that's the plus side. And that's because they're only using the hydrogen and not using anything else, and when you use a lightweight particle and accelerate it quickly, you're all good. On this one, I believe we're still using, yes, we're still using uh, Arizina N204 RCS, which is less efficient with the system, but because of balance reasons, I didn't want to change it just yet. We 
we can hold till apoapsis this game a little bit out of hand, but I want to get into a nice one and a half hour orbit to phase with Cape Canaveral after a day. If you weren't here for the development of this particular shuttle system, one of its fringe benefits is that we do have a launch escape system. These are SRBs on the side of this section, and there is a decoupler here. Uh, that can separate this off and it does have wings to control uh, its separation and subsequent descent and there are parachutes on top you can see parachute here parachute here parachute here parachute here uh, to safely splash it down and we've had to use that actually uh, it's uncrewed but uh, we've definitely tested that out before You can see that there is some extra Delta V besides these engines. These are providing 790 more meters per second. The extra Delta V is from the SRBs, so we're not intending to use that. Let's give it a little bit more than an uh, hour and a half because just to compensate for the fact that we took some extra time to get here. Let's say, oh, a few seconds will do. Let's get it to 275 kilometers on the periapsis. There we go. Okay, well, uh, we will wait here a day. Let's see, how's our electric charge? We are depleting liquid hydrogen, so there is some, some boil-off still, even with the radiators. Electric charge seems fine. Okay, so this is the orbit that we want to descend at. All right. Well, let's hand it off to the descent, the reentry script, and see what happens. Well, let's close that one out. Let's say this Thor script, uh, Thor core, should be fine, and then we will be able to see what goes wrong. And I fully expect that something continues to go wrong here. Oh, first of all, we should turn off Smart ESS, otherwise it's going to interfere. Okay, preparing for retroburn. We are carrying a lot of extra fuel. And actually, after the retroburn, I'm going to purge the liquid hydrogen just to see how that affects things. Since we're using Aerosene and N204 for the RCS system, I don't need the hydrogen. And these engines are not useful at all in the atmosphere. Alright, it has finished the retro burn. Once it's uh, got to the atmosphere, I'll dump the hydrogen. Okay, here we go, it's turning around. And let's dump some of this. I feel like we're not using all of our RCS. Yes, we are not. Okay, first of all, that's important. And we should, I guess, unlock this fuel. Or I forget if it's locked for balance reasons, probably. But we need to unlock it so that those actually fire. We'll have to pump fuel around just in case. So I'll prepare to do that. Okay, let's stop the sound. I've got a trivial amount of fuel left, which is fine. And this is... What we've got as far as RCS fuel. Let's just put that off to the side in preparation for potentially pumping it up. Okay, we are at 90 kilometers and the body is glowing red, but that's probably normal. And as far as I can tell, the RCS use is fine. Uh, pitch balance is okay. We've got a little bit of use there. Okay, we're getting a little bit of wigglies as we approach 
the coast of North America. That's Baja, California up ahead. And yeah, I'm just worried about how it's wiggling. Mm, yeah, let me send some more fuel up front. Maybe that'll help. So far, nothing has blown up. That's the important part. We have half of our RCS fuel left at 80 kilometers here. Oh, wait. Spoke too soon. Hmm. I wonder what part might still be ablative on here. Like, uh, you know, a part that isn't strictly necessary for survival that can blow up. I don't know. Well, it's stabilized now. So it looks like uh, a little bit of delay after pumping the fuel forward, but now it's stabilized. Let me see. Let me continue pumping fuel forward. Oh, uh, oh, the tail tank. Right. I have had problems with that before. Well, yes, we've we've had that problem before. The tail tank does blow up. I'll need to figure out what to do about that. Uh, I'd need to just put one of those shielded tanks instead of the normal procedural parts tank. But yeah, that always happens. I just keep forgetting to fix it. Right now I get the feeling that we're going to fall short of Florida. We're still over Mexico. We're going to be passing over Texas soon. Just this little part. And then it's Gulf of Mexico time. We've still got 5,500 meters per second. And we are getting lift right now. Maybe we can make it to Florida, maybe not. It's trying. Uh, it's uh, setting the minimum allowed pitch to get as much lift as possible rather than drag, but it's going to be a tough one. Okay, we are going back down again, 68 kilometers, but we're running out of RCS fuel now. Got to pump the rest up forward. Uh, that doesn't seem like a good idea since the back ones for some reason don't fire. There seems to be a lack of cross feeding right now. Let me see if I can fix that. Um, that might just be how weird the links are. Uh, do you have enable cross feed? Maybe that's. Oh, we've got problems. Uh, Hold on a sec. Let me dump the remaining liquid hydrogen because that's in the tail. Oh, now we've got the persistent sound problem again. It's got this interesting flippy sort of thing. I've seen that pattern before. In space, actually. You see, it wants to regularly flip, flip, Flip. Flip. Huh. That's an interesting pattern. Okay. Uh, we've regained prograde and we can probably recover this. We are off the coast of Louisiana right now. I don't think we can glide to the Mississippi Delta or anything. Not that, that it would be safe to land there, but... Dang it. You might think I could turn the sound off, but... It actually does not matter. As you can see, sound min... Doesn't do anything. I can't even close this. It says action in progress. Okay, pulling up time. Ooh. Oh, maybe I should have just aborted. Ah, well, and that sound continues. Alright, alright, stop, stop, stop. I can't. 
All right, enough chaos and random destruction for one episode. Let's just get some resupply missions out of the way. So this is the Moonport resupply. We've technically got 45 days left, but let's not cut too close. Let's send this mission over. Of course, we've got backups just in case something happens with this. We've got those already built, but let's, let's just have an easy time of it. Okay, it's sort of twitching on the launch pad, though. Doesn't make me feel great but it should be all right. Where's the controller? Nope, that's good enough. Usually the top one is at the bottom of the list, but I always want to check because sometimes I've, it's been weird, so. All right, this is a Fiji 2-1 and we're lined up with the moon. Run Fiji 2-1. Okay, and we're off. And it's not too loud, which is good after all of the noise produced by Ship Manifest. Okay, we have one engine out per, per the usual pattern. That is to limit G-forces to 4 Gs. Alright, separation and ignition. Fairing does not seem to be in the right place at all. Oh, I didn't notice that uh, we've got a reusable moonport resupply. That's what this is. Oh, this is very fancy. It's got uh, eight of those candle engines. And it's meant to come back with parachutes and everything. Oh dear. That might be overdoing it. This was probably pretty expensive too. So we better reuse it. Forgot I had built this one. Well, let's get the radiator started. Probably I have it on action group, but I forgot which action group it is. Since it has the RTGs, it doesn't need additional solar panels or anything like that. And we're probably using cold gas thrusters. Yeah, they're using hydrogen gas. But that's not very efficient. It's only 230 seconds of ISP, so... We have to use that sparingly. Well, this should be interesting. Will this survive coming back? A little bit more involved than I was thinking I was gonna do. Well, I mean, it depends on whether we can transfer all the supplies over. Okay, and that's orbit. Good times. Launch complete. And plenty of fuel to transfer, if we believe that. So let's see. It's a little bit complicated because of the staging of the of the instrumentation section. Okay, well we're not in particularly an opportune time to transfer to the moon in a way that would make it easy to get to the station. But we should have enough fuel and everything, so no big problems. And shut down. All right, let's see how it is. Just a bit of RCS, I think, will do the trick. I don't think it'll be particularly useful for us to keep this stage with us, even though it's got a fair amount of Delta V left. Let's just separate off at this point. And is there a backwards controller I could use to control this? Otherwise, everything's going to be irritating. Are you a backwards controller? Yes, you are. Okay, good times. I don't know if this has enough fuel to also get back. Break orbit from the moon. 1,505 meters per second. Hmm. Yeah. 
I don't think it has enough to get there and get back. But on the way back, it's not going to have the food, water, and oxygen, so maybe it's all right. Maybe. It doesn't look like the liquid hydrogen is boiling off, so the radiators we've got on here are sufficient. It says cooling is only 38%, so we could actually get by with fewer radiators, but let's not overdo things. Or underdo things. Up, up. Did too much. Okay, on to periapsis. Okay, we have captured around the moon. Well, the thing about using these little RTG engines is it takes a long time to do a retro burn for orbit. Even with eight of them, these candle engines take a while. Uh, you know what? Um, maybe one more cycle. Okay, there we go. Closest approach distance 2.6 kilometers. That'll be good enough. Okay, moving in. And looks like we're docking. Okay, it's pretty big compared to the other supply vessels, but that's because of the volume that the hydrogen takes up. Of course, those were all hypergolic. Uh, hydrogen fuel takes a lot more space. But let's just transfer the supplies and then see if it's possible to bring it back. It has about the same amount of supplies as the other previous type of supply vessel. As you can see, uh, nearly the same amount. Not quite, though. We have some over overfill that we'll have to send to a different tank. Okay, I think we've transferred everything. Oh, oh no, all of these uh, little tanks on the engines. Those are supplies, too. Oh, we've got a lot of supplies on this, actually. More than I thought more than the regular vessels. Well, that's good. Not only does that mean that we won't need to send as many over, it also means that we probably have more Delta V to come back than I was expecting. Prior to transferring supplies out, it said 400 meters per second. And that's a good benchmark to remember so that when we transfer these over in the future we'll know to reserve at least that if there turns out to be enough to get back we'll see 1000 meters per second that's enough to come back home we don't have any food water and oxygen we have half of the ablator on the heat shield so that's worth noting we'll see how that works out for us So, altogether, this might be a very nice supply vehicle. I wonder what those thrusters are. Well, anyway, they, they'll always work. Uh, this is 1.1.3, you don't have to stage the RCS. Okay, let's try and figure out how to make it back home. Alright, 62 kilometers should do. If we have to go around twice, that's no big deal. It's not like this needs supplies. Okay. So the station now, moon base, not moon base one, uh, moon port one has more than a year of supplies, more than a year and a half. So in fact, uh, let's see, our Mars people will be on their way back before we have to actually resupply moon port one again. They won't actually be back, I don't think. It depends on what kind of transfer we've got there. Depends how long that takes. Now, the question is, will it flip around during re-entry, right? Uh, I don't know how heavy the candle engines are. Hopefully not too heavy. 
there's not much other mass except for them and the docking port. Rest is all empty tanks, so hopefully the heat shield will be decisively heavier. We can make sure to pump the remainder of the liquid hydrogen down closer to the heat shield. That's the best we can do. Of course, we still have some RCS fuel. Okay, before we actually enter, let me arm the parachutes. Second re-entry of the episode, and the question is, will it flip? Okay, we've got flames. Well, looking good. I think we're just going to come down on this pass. Plenty of ablator to spare, but we probably shouldn't reduce the ablator on this just to make sure that it stays balanced. Right now it looks balanced. Looks like it's not going to flip anywhere. Best to keep it that way since, I mean, we've delivered enough supplies and it had Delta V to spare and everything, so best to just keep it like this, I think. I think this is a successful system for now. But of course it's critically important that we bring these little candle engines back because they're really expensive. And we already lost four of them on the on the earlier launch. Okay, and full parachute deployment brings us to five meters per second. No problems. So we have at least one new new system, successful system, tested under our belts in this episode. Next time we should resupply the Earth Orbit Station. That's some mucky water there. And then we'll move on to, I think, the Jupiter launches since the window's in 27 days. So on that note, and with this being recovered, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.